Okay, hi. Now, I just wanted to show the world what's going on with these Phoenix Gold amplifiers. On the bench in front of me today, we have a Phoenix Gold TI2 2000.1. So this is a very expensive amplifier from Phoenix Gold. It is rated at 2000 watts RMS at 1 ohm. And it's pretty small form factor for a 2K. Now, when I first got this into the workshop, I thought, ah, okay, this is one of Phoenix Gold's uh, cheaper amplifier lines. This is something that's going to not cost much more than sort of 300 to 400 pounds brand new in the UK, or maybe sort of uh, 350 to 450 bucks brand new in the US. And when I uh, actually looked up the price of these things, I could not believe my eyes. I cannot believe how much they are charging for this piece of shit amplifier that we have in front of me. So, Phoenix Gold, I've always um, had a pretty good opinion of Phoenix Gold equipment. Their old uh, tantrum amplifiers were very good design, albeit a nightmare to repair. Um, and they sounded very nice. It sounded almost like a Class AB, even though it was a, a Class D or Class T uh, tripath amplifier. The um, and their subwoofers as well. I've had pretty good experiences with. Sound very nice and very well priced as well. Uh, pretty decently built. Uh, take a bit of power as well. And so I thought, yeah, you know, their amplifiers are going to be uh, the same. If you're spending like seven hundred pounds, which is what it is in the UK, I don't know how much they retail for in the US, but it's got to be over seven hundred dollars. I oh, I cannot believe people are are spending that much money on this. Um, so yeah, when I got this apart and I, I was just looking at the circuit and looking at how this thing is put together, I, I just, I don't know what to say. So I'm going to walk you through uh, what we see here and you can make your own opinions and decisions on what's going on here with Phoenix Gold. So if we take a look at the circuit here, it's a pretty standard layout. Now I'm going to go through the different parts of the circuit here with my handheld camera. Okay, so here we have the power supply circuit. Now, power supply circuits in the majority of car audio amplifiers are very generic and they're pretty much all the same. And that's no difference here. So, here we have the power supply drive circuit board. Now, this circuit board is, this little driver board here, is used in something ridiculous like 85 to 90% of Class D mono amplifiers of this power type. This is an extremely generic power supply drive board, which is fine. The power supply hasn't got to do anything related to the audio as such. It's just got to change 12 volts into whatever voltage the output section needs in order to do its rated power. So if we have a look at the power supply MOSFETs, which are along the edges of the amplifier, what type of MOSFETs are we using in here? We have got IRF 3205. The 3205s are a pretty standard and very good MOSFET uh, for, for this to be using. They're very reliable, they're easy to drive, and they have good uh, current handling, and they don't die too often either. So that's a thumbs up. We're using 3205s in the power supply. However, that's about where it ends. When we get onto the transformers, now, in order for this to be a, a 700 pound amplifier, or whatever it is in the US for dollars, the build quality needs to be of a certain level. And most, you know, a lot of people will be mounting these amplifiers to the boxes or in the cars that are actually vibrating quite a bit because there's quite a bit of flex because obviously we've got 2K here. Um, now, these, tra these transformers are not seated down properly whatsoever. So we just have the transformer floating on its own legs. There's not any glues or silicon or anything holding these transformers down uh, and preventing them from moving. You can see here, if I zoom in on this, I'm able to wiggle this in place. And so what's gonna happen is when this amplifier is subjected to vibration, this transformer is gonna do this like 30 to 50 times a second. And what happens when that, when it does that, is it actually rubs all the legs and all these, um, all this wire has a very, very thin layer of insulation. And when it rubs like this, it rubs away the insulation and then the transformer short circuits and which blows the power supply. So both of these transformers are not seated down properly at all. And they need to have at least proper CA or something along the top, like in a ring to uh, seat down all the winds to the transformer itself. And it needs to have some kind of silicon sealant or mastic or something, which is underneath preventing this thing from moving against the board. 
Not only that, we have all these bit strands here coming off which are, are not secured down properly either and they are rubbing against the top here and this one here is just floating around and going off to the side here. Um, so that's my fir the first thing I noticed, I was like wow. I cannot believe that Phoenix Gold have not actually taken the time and care to commission whatever the build house to actually build these properly and, se and secure these down to prevent vibration from killing these very quickly, which is what's going to happen. If we move up along the board, we get to the output section. So we've got you know a reasonable amount of rail capacitors, nothing crazy. You look at Rockford Fosgate 2Ks and they've got a massive bank of rail caps, and so this is pretty pretty lame pretty pretty basic if if, if anything um, so let's move on up to the output section of the amplifier now the output inductors we have the exact same case as we have with the transformers the output inductors are not seated down properly whatsoever there's absolutely no glue or CA or anything on these which is preventing these from um, w walking around or snapping or rubbing off the board and in this amplifier this amplifier is blown because it's coming for repair and we actually have a blown output MOSFET here which you can see there's a bit of black on the board here this is this one shorted and it shorted out this whole bank of um, output FETs and probably the reason for that is I haven't taken this thing fully apart yet but probably the reason for that is because these inductors have actually snapped off of the board because they're not seated down properly you can see it goes into the board here and there's a really small kind of little little hole there that it goes through and you can see that that's actually wobbling in there. So I reckon that's actually come off of the board on the bottom and therefore has been arcing and caused this thing to blow. You can see the original location of these inductors is meant to be pretty central on the board, but they've actually been vibrated so badly that they've moved all the way over here and they should be more like that if I push that that way. And because these have moved and also because of vibration, we have this resistor here that's snapped off of the board as well, which has probably caused the output section to go down additionally. So not only do we have very poor build quality on the transformers, nothing seating these down, preventing vibration from killing them, nothing preventing these from vibrating and snapping off the board or rubbing against themselves, moving around, etc. We also have absolutely no screws down the center of this board. Now, why do we need screws down the center of the board? When this amplifier is mounted to any surface that's going to vibrate, what happens is the whole board, because it's quite heavy, is going to trampoline like this. So the board is going to bounce up and down like this on along the center of the board you can see that the whole board is moving as I do that it's going to do that 30 to 50 times a second depending on what frequency you're playing now the effect that this has is it puts huge strain on all of the legs and all the connections along the side of the amplifier where the MOSFETs are and the rectifiers are because these are actually clamped to the sides so these are clamped to the sides the board is moving therefore the edge is going is the edges is um, kind of going like this and it, it causes huge stress on these legs and eventually they snap off of the board so not only do we have poor transformers poor inductor mounting the mounting is very poor on these two we have nothing preventing the board from trampolining down the middle which it really should even very very small sundown digital designs uh, Rockford Fosgate um, you know pretty much any other amplifier that, that, that costs any reasonable amount of money will have proper screws around the board to, to, see, to secure it to the heatsink so that this does not happen. Not only do we have that, not only do we have a terribly, terribly poor build quality for this price of amplifier, this actual circuit design is really, really generic and really, really cheap. This is not a Phoenix Gold design. Phoenix Gold have nothing to do with this amplifier design whatsoever. This is an off-the-shelf piece of crap, either Chinese or Korean build. Um, yeah, this is about as cheap and as basic as you can get. This circuit design you will find in the likes of Hyphonics, Lanzar Vibe, all sorts of other really cheap amplifier brands that you would laugh at and say oh hell no I'm not buying that piece of shit that's awful right just to compare this so here we go here we have this Phoenix Gold circuit okay so I'm just gonna show you the different parts of the circuit real quick and um, we've gone through the power supply drive board that's very generic but that's fine power supply MOSFETs are okay the output MOSFETs are not too bad this this is probably one of the uh, along alongside the power supply MOSFETs these are okay these are 50 N 25s um, so these are relatively expensive and relatively high current MOSFETs but the actual circuit design and the actual drive architecture is the same as all those really old Hyphonics piece of crap amplifiers that you get. 
So this 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 drive circuit is um, it's not based around a sort of IRS two one eight four four S or an FAN or um, any kind of modern drive circuit. It's not PIC controlled. It's not driven by an IR two twenty ten S or anything like that. This is a really old drive circuit, and it's buffered by. So we've got the, the main drive, uh, the class D generation circuit on here with the IC. That then goes to the buffer, the, these um, drive transistors, which the drive is then buffered by these transistors before it gets to the actual MOSFETs, which are going to be doing the class D switching. So this circuit, like I said, you find you'll find this exact circuit in the likes of Hyphonics and Lanzar Vibe. And here I have an example. Okay, here I <laughs> here I have an example. One moment, let me get the heat sink. Right, so this amplifier, you may you may be familiar with this amplifier, this this or this brand of amplifier. Okay, look at this. Lands our vibe. Okay, so if you saw this in a in a car, in a friend's car, in a customs car, or for sale, you'd be like, ah, hell no, I'm not spending my money on this. This is some piece of crap bullshit. And this is, uh, you know, this is this is called the 3200D. Um, looking at the circuit, this is probably going to do about 2.5, 2.8k, I reckon. Looking at the circuit in this amplifier. And to buy this sort of thing brand new, um, you're probably looking at in the UK paying around about. I don't know, maybe 250 to 300 pounds, absolute maximum. In the US, you might be paying sort of 200 bucks to 300 bucks, absolute maximum. This is the board inside that amplifier, okay? So here we have, if I get my little my, my handheld camera here. So, power supply drive circuit. Here we see pretty much the, yeah, this is the exact same power supply driver board as we saw in the Phoenix Gold. The power supply here is using IRF 3205s, exactly the same MOSFETs as we saw in the Phoenix Gold, and there's more of them. The transformers, although they're not seated down brilliantly, they are seated down so much better than the Phoenix Gold. We actually have some silicon around the transformer to stop it from moving on the board. We actually have some CA glue all around the transformer on the top here to prevent the strands from moving against themselves. And if I try and wiggle this, it does not move. It is solid. It is solid on the board. And all these loose strands also have been seated down to the board. The same goes for this one over here. So already the build quality of this Lanzar Vibe is much better than the Phoenix Gold that we were just looking at. So, not only do we have more components, the components are better seated down. If we look at the output section, we have much more capacitors here going on in the output section. So this is, is you know, going to be a lot better. The output um, MOSFETs are TO220 package, so they're smaller package, but there's a lot more of them. Now let's have a look at the drive circuit, the drive architecture. This is the exact same amplifier drive architecture as the Phoenix Gold. It's the same driver board. Look, it's the exact same basic amplifier. So this Lanzar Vibe is the exact same basic amplifier as the horrifically expensive Phoenix Gold that we were just looking at. But it's actually a little bit bigger, but costs less than half the price, will do more power and has a better build quality than the Phoenix Gold. What the flipping hell is going on with Phoenix Gold? I have no idea how they are able to get away with charging such a horrific amount for such a pile of turd. This is such a pile of turd amplifier, such a generic, basic, crappy build quality piece of piece of crap, really. And I, I, like when I when I saw the price of this thing, I just ha I I couldn't I just couldn't even. Let's slide this out of the case just real quick and see whether there's anything funky going on on the bottom of the board. So already on the on the heat sink here, we can see there's white marks there from the, the these white marks. These are from the inductors, and the, this is probably because they they've snapped off the board or something. Let's have a look. Let's drag this thing out of the case. Haven't actually taken this out yet, so this will be interesting. Let's have a look what's going on on the induct. Oh, hang on, what the. F Oh my, what? So, something just fell off. So this, this diode just fell off. 
it literally just fell off the board from somewhere what the hell so I've now got to go and find where the hell that diode came from uh, <laughs> this is just gets better so okay let's put that to one side oh and by the way I forgot to mention these inductors the only thing that was holding them on the board were these cable tires which snapped I didn't cut these off these had snapped off because of vibration damage uh, these had been these had been vibrated to the side so much that these were being pulled so tight uh, they just snapped off so yeah um, okay so let's take a look on the bottom of the board here and see do we have anything interesting going on near the inductors Okay, so this is where the inductors are soldered to the board, so yeah, it looks okay. It doesn't look like they, they've snapped off from the bottom of the board, but I reckon that we've got some snappage on the top of the board uh, because it looked like it was moving in the hole there when I was wiggling the inductor around a bit. Uh, and in terms of the, the actual board thickness itself, this is a really flimsy board. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not 700 pounds worth of amplifier here by any stretch of the imagination. So, yeah, I am just completely uh, lost for words, and um, I guess, anyway, if, if, if this is how Phoenix Gold are going forward, if they are struggling so much in their business that they are having to stop producing quality products, and they are having to turn to piece of crap generic products that they have not designed or gone anywhere near with a barge pole, and just said, we want 20,000 of these, build them as cheap as you can, we'll mark them up to some horrific markup and sell them to the idiots who are the general public and because they trust us, they trust us based on our previous um, our previous success in, in products that have been very high quality, they trust us, so now let's sell them shit for a horrific markup and make lots of money and therefore survive as a business. Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> 